this ball should never have been allowed to be used at football's highest level has been said about a certain Premier League football. So I bought it, along with all the other worst football products there is, because I want to find out how much they really will affect my game. Right, so first things first, I want to test out the worst football boots ever made. But before we can do that, I want to get my hands on the best football boots of all time and test them out for comparison. So I did some research and one pair of boots topped every list I looked at. And to show you what they are, we need to go back to 2002. In the early 2000s, we saw some of the biggest changes in football boots we'd ever seen, and a few players made this boot so iconic that today, many people still consider it the best ever made. So in here, I have the boot that consistently topped every list for the best football boot of all time. And honestly, it's not one that I actually thought about, but I do think it's a fair choice. Let's get it unboxed and test it out. The boot voted the best of all time is the Adidas Predator Mania 2002. This iconic boot was worn by the likes of Zidane and Beckham. It topped every list I looked at, and one even said the boot was so undeniably cool even rugby players started wearing them. So let's see what the hype's all about, and then I'll compare them with the worst football boots of all time. And you jerk it out. You know what, it was interesting just how consistently these boots were at the top of every list. Like literally every list I looked at of people ranking the best boots of all time, the Predator Manias came up on top every single time. Now, I must admit, comfort definitely is not their strong point, but everything else is pretty great and the design is timeless. One thing I will say, I don't know if it's because they're old or what, but they let in a lot of water. My feet are soaking right now. I've just put my modern boots back on and it made me realize the Predators are so uncomfortable in comparison. So overall, the Predator Mania were a great boot, but due to the rays, there were a few flaws. But now I'm gonna find the worst boot ever made. Worst football boot ever made. 10 worst boots ever. Number one is the Kelmy Swarovski boots and I'm pretty sure we can't get our hands on them. Number two, the Hummel 6.2 concept. They actually look quite cool, but once again, I don't think I can get them. They're a concept boot, they were never actually released. Okay, number three on the list. Now, this is a boot I can actually buy. So I did, and it was time to test out what was apparently the worst boot ever. Now, if you get voted the worst boots of all time, that's pretty harsh, so let's test them out and see if that's a fair statement. They're not the most beautiful football boots of all time. They're not winning that award. Can't get over this massive thing right on the laces. So these are the concave halo boots. Now, I'll be honest, they don't look great, but let's see what they like to play with. This thing here is absolutely solid. I mean, they feel very weird. But will these boots stop me from doing skills? Whilst I was still able to do some skills in these boots, it definitely made it more difficult. Close control was also a bit of a problem, just because of how bulky they were. But their unique selling point is shooting, so maybe that will be better. Honestly, not that bad. I do feel like I can absolutely thump them with ease on. There's a bit of plastic right here that it's starting to dig into my foot and it's really quite sharp. So these boots are designed for power. So let's see if they'll actually give me more shot power. I had three shots with my normal boots and hit an average of 63.3 miles per hour. And then I put the concaves on and hit the exact same scores. So no difference in power. I think the title of worst boots ever is pretty harsh, but apart from one-off gimmick boots like these, personally, I'd probably put them near the bottom of my list when it comes to football boots. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to be testing out the worst World Cup ball ever. Now, World Cup balls make up some of the most iconic footballs of all time. But before we test out the worst one, I've got to get my hands on the best ever World Cup ball and see how good it really is. And unlike the best boots ever, the World Cup ball is a more highly debated topic. But there was one ball that consistently found its way at the number one spot on every page I looked. <laughs> The 2006 Adidas Team Geist, and I'm inclined to agree with all these lists, just look at it. And the ball that they use for the final is even better, but what's it like to play with, and does it deserve the number one spot? Honestly, there's no other ball I've used that seems to fly as nice as this. Just look at these shots. Whoa, that flies. 
Mate, that knuckles already so much just flies so smoothly. Whoa. Right, so the Team Geist is a fantastic ball, but now let's move on to what we really want to test out, and that's the worst World Cup ball. Now, realistically, the World Cup ball that everyone hates is the Jabulani, but we're not going to look at that today. We're going to pretend that doesn't exist, because there is one other World Cup ball that people don't really like, and it's one that surprised me. So, if not the Jabulani, then which World Cup ball was the worst one ever made? Well, it's the 2018 Adidas Telstar that seems to be at the bottom of everyone's list, and I'm going to try and find out why. So I started off with a few shots and the ball felt really nice to kick. I'll be running, and for dribbling, the ball was also really good. So I was kind of confused why people voted it as their least favorite World Cup ball. So the Telstar is really nice to play with. So that can't be the reason people voted it the worst World Cup ball. But I think I do know why. So the World Cup ball is the most famous and highly anticipated football there is. And when it's unveiled once every four years, people expect big things. So when after four years of waiting, Adidas released this, I think people were just a bit disappointed. There's nothing really special about this ball. It's supposed to be a nod to the 1970 original Telstar. So for playing wise, the ball's fantastic. But for designing creativity, I can see why people don't like it so much. <laughs> Now, before I test out the ball that the Telegraph said should not be used in top flight football, I want to see what is the worst kit ever. When it comes to the worst kits, I do have one in mind that's recently been in the news due to complaints by footballers. Aston Villa and Aston Villa's women's team have refused to wear their latest kit due to the fact that when it gets wet, it sticks to your body. And by these pictures, it does look pretty bad. So I bought one for myself and I had to test it out. Right, so here is the controversial football kit. It's the latest Aston Villa home kit. So I turn on the hose to simulate sweat and rain. And after soaking for a few seconds, I've got to admit, it was pretty bad. Well, that is horrible. And for comparison, I also did the same with another kit. And whilst this kit also wasn't great, the Villa top was definitely worse. Now, before we look at the worst Premier League football of all time, first up, we're going to look at the ball that was consistently voted the best. So, critics say that every football fan loves this ball, and I certainly think it's a beauty. But what is it? It's the Nike T90 Aero that's been voted the best Premier League ball ever. Now, these Nike T90 Premier League balls are incredibly rare and will sell for like a thousand pounds or if not more these days. But to be fair, they are considered probably the most iconic Premier League football of all time. And by the looks of it, everyone's favorite. So it's not really a surprise they're so expensive. Now, it looks great and it's iconic, but is it actually nice to play with? Striking this ball is really nice. The design also makes the ball look really cool when it flies through the air. For skills and dribbling, it's also pretty good. But one thing I would say is that it's quite slippy. It's actually really nice, but I can't help but feel it just can't compare to modern balls these days. It's just not got the amount of padding and cushion you get from a modern football. And it's a little bit plasticky and might sting a little bit in cold weather. So that's the best Premier League ball done. And now we're onto the final product of the video and it's been voted consistently the worst Premier League football. Right, so this ball has had some pretty bad reviews and I want to read some out to you just to give you an idea of how much people dislike it. So the first one from the Telegraph says, this is an undisputable fact that this ball should never have been allowed to be used at football's highest level. It's a ball that evokes fears of sudden gusts of wind when kicking it around a beach as a 10 year old. Wow, that's pretty harsh. The next one says, this vile creation set the tone for a crazy season. Now those are pretty harsh, so I think it's about time we get it unboxed and take it to the pitch. So the ball has arrived. Let's get it unboxed and see what it's like. It looks pretty cool, that's for sure. Right, so this is apparently the worst Premier League football and to me it looks pretty nice and honestly it does feel a little bit strange. Let's take it to the pitch and test it out. Now before we get to taking some shots with this ball and by all accounts it's definitely not very good at all so I'm excited to test that out. First we need to see what it's like to play with on the pitch. So far the ball felt nice and I think it looks really cool too. So that must mean that the reason people don't like it is because it's not very nice to kick. So I took it to the pitch and hit some shots. 
Now straight off the back, this ball seemed to fly. We were having a lot of trouble keeping it under the bar. But once I got used to it, I started hitting some decent knuckleballs and it was flying really nicely. The article from The Telegraph also suggests that when it's windy, this ball can move pretty crazy. It's a ball that evokes fears of sudden gusts of wind. So I waited for a windy day and headed down to the pitch. Right, so today it's pretty windy, so I thought it'd be a perfect time to have another test of this ball. Now the ball was absolutely flying way over the crossbar, but nothing that you wouldn't expect from any other ball on a windy day. And if anything, the ball actually felt quite heavy. So here's my final review of what is apparently the worst Premier League football. So whilst this ball looks iconic, is iconic, is an unbelievable ball, if I had to choose one to play, I would pick this one. Honestly, just because the modern technology, it's got a lot more padding, it's nicer to kick. This, to play football with, has got to be the better football.